<clears throat> Good evening, everybody. It is currently March 8th, 20... Or, sorry, April 8th, 2024. We got an enhanced risk of severe weather over most of the southern plains, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into it here. We got a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings already in effect for eastern Texas. So, as soon as I finish configuring everything, we will go ahead and get set right up here. So... I'm going to go into one thing real quick here. Make sure I'm unmuted. Can you guys hear me okay in here? Uh, car? All right, yeah, I can hear you. All right, car, I'm you joined don't. by Noah and Renee from UNWT here. They are extremely great. They are extremely appreciated for helping me here today. So, Noah, you want to go ahead and go over what we got going on today? I don't even know what we got going on today. I haven't even looked at it yet. <laughs> I drove on. I, I, I like. I've been. I've been driving. I'm exhausted. Oh <laughs> we got an enhanced risk across most of the southern plains, mainly for Texas. We got a. It is enhanced for hail for today, so we're going to be monitoring the risk for pretty large hail, probably two to three inches in diameter. Plus, a couple tornadoes are possible mm -hmm. in as the evening goes on, as these storms continue to form. So we're going to go ahead and jump right over into this severe thunderstorm warning we got out near out near St. Augustine. It, well, it looks okay so far. Still in the maturing process. It's got a hail core on it. Yeah, it's, it's a different... Let's put one on one here for right now. Hopefully it can get away from that that batch of rain that's right there to the south of it. And then there's also that special weather statement near Livingston. Yeah, we got that special weather statement that is currently east of Huntsville near Livingston, like Noah said. These storms are slowly going to begin to organize as the evening goes on, but for right now, they're just pretty big clustered. So, also, if I'm you guys surprised. Go ahead. Go ahead. You fine, go ahead. Also, some of y'all didn't notice we also had the eclipse today. So if you have any eclipse pictures, feel free to share them below. Just Man, I'm surprised tomorrow went ten six. I am too, and we will most likely be live for tomorrow. So stay tuned for more information regarding tomorrow because we will. Well, I'll, I'll most likely be live. I got nothing really going on anyway. Same. But next week, we if, if things can get a little more consistent, we might see some severe weather next week over the plains. Yeah, and I will most likely be out chasing for that, so you guys will get a live storm chase from me for that. And I don't know who I'll be going with, but it'll have to be with somebody because my car is currently in total, so... <laughs> Yeah, I'll be. I'll probably. I'll more than likely be out chasing. So, come get me then. <laughs> I probably will. Next next week, honestly, if it can stay the way it's looking, it could be pretty interesting. Honestly. Yeah, but I'll probably do a forecast video. Looks like the most like week. repeat of. I will most likely do a forecast video on next week, just because I'm still learning on how to forecast accurately so it'll kind of put me to the test a little bit to kind of do a display i'm still working on learning forecasting better i'm not the best at it I'm getting better I'm getting better at it but not at the rate that i want to so yeah then again this video or this live stream is being worked with the members of UNWT or United National Weather Team, go ahead and check out their stuff below. I will drop links into the live chat regarding their Facebook, all that stuff for them. So go free, feel free to check them out because they're volunteering their time to help me out today, which is greatly appreciated. What are you live on right now? YouTube. Yeah, I'm trying to figure that out too. Where's the YouTube. actual video? Oh, okay, gotcha. Copy oh, you're, on, you're live on YouTube? Wait, what? Is there a link in here? Are, are, are you live on YouTube right now, yes, Ethan? I'm live on YouTube. Okay.
We got a new day. There we go. You guys out. Be able it looks to like it is going to be. That, that hail risk, that enhancer has got big. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did it for hail. The yeah, they did. Really it's for the party thing. At least to my knowledge, even though I didn't really forecast this event too well, just because I've been dealing with other stuff lately. Tornado threat doesn't seem very high, but there is a chance for some. Yeah, it doesn't seem well. It looks like today will be mostly hailers. Elevated hailers with a couple tornadoes, but tomorrow is where the real tornado threat will focus. Oh yeah. Three and then, and then did you see they issued a slight did you see they issued that slight risk over fucking Ohio again? Mm hmm Dude. I swear, if Ohio has another day like they did just the other day, I'm chasing it. Matt, you better come get me on your way. That's all I gotta say. I will because I gotta go to. I got. It's it's quicker to go up through your way anyway. So it looks like it is a massive five percent risk for most of the enhanced area, but it is enhanced for. Da -da 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 -da. Thirty sig hail. hail. Thirty sig hail across. Most of northern Texas along I-20, including the DFW Metroplex, all the way over to Shreveport, and then all the way out towards Lubbock. So this entire area could be looking at some pretty big hail this afternoon into the evening as time goes on. So oh my gosh, that, that tin fig got bigger for tomorrow, too. Oh, that's not good. Here, if the night continues to drone on to where we don't really see much happening, we'll go over tomorrow as well, probably do a live forecast for it. But as of right now, we do have some storms developing along just north of the I-10 corridor. So... Wow. That one's starting to look pretty good. It's, deta it's detaching, so it's and it's it's starting to get itself going. That one hey, over uh, Saint Augustine. What? What'd you say, Renee? Where's the link? Where what? What's your thing on YouTube? I sent a link. I sent a link in the chat. Hold on. Like your thing on YouTube. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay, it's good to go. Got it. I just oh. sent it. Okay. Bring Got me. it. Got it. This, this one, uh, this uh, SVR over St. Augustine starting to get its act together real quick. Okay. And then I can share that live with the page, too. I gotta mute it, though, here. Okay. Hey. Who's yelling for me? Okay, got it. Jordan, when you get a chance, can you get my tablet? Where is it? Upstairs in my backpack, so I have another monitor. I need about five monitors. <laughs> I only have the one, and I'm making do. I got my phone and my laptop. I was half teasing. Um, I used to have a computer set up, a gaming one that had two, but I gave it to my husband so my brother could have his. So I'm just on my MacBook and my tablet. Honestly, today is going to be pretty interesting if it can actually establish itself. I'm not sure how high the tornado threat really is going to be for today, but we will find out shortly, I'm sure. Current look at the DFW Metroplex. We got storms firing up near Brady, east of Colleen and Temple. Those storms should move off to the north and east, maybe impacting the DFW Metroplex in the next couple hours, but it is still a little too early to tell what these storms are going to do. 
So just have multiple ways to receive warnings as the day goes on because stuff can get pretty gnarly. I see. Yo. Uh, yeah, he is. Uh -huh. Yeah, so quick. Here from Makeup Studio, does that finish? Second. Looks like we got some stuff firing out near Abilene, most likely. So. You can kind of see the cold front draped across right here. That'll be the focal point for initiation later on today. But current look at look at the wrong item here. Current look at satellite kind of shit. Oof. In a general look at satellite here, you can kind of see storms yeah, down there. Move away. <laughs> I get it. No, uh, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's having some ham issues and he asked me directly. Are you ready? Did I see the what? Yeah. We got some development out here near Brady. Looks like these storms will be heading up towards the DFW area in the next couple hours. So if you live in DFW, make sure you have multiple ways to receive warnings because tonight could get pretty gnarly in terms of some giant hail and maybe a tornado or two. So now is the time to be ready because I know there's a lot of people down south for the eclipse that happened today because Dallas was one of the biggest cities that were in totality. So, if you're in the area and you're trying to get out, you should probably do that soon, because these storms have the potential to bring some pretty big hail up through that way, and today could have not been a worse day for storms in the eclipse path.
There's Alicia. Yeah, today is just pretty, it's pretty much a little early still, but I'm going to go ahead and go back over to this SVR here. We'll review it. Yeah, I see that. I'm having... starting to get a pretty good hail score. Hey, right, I am. What? Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. But we have a few storms firing off. It, today's going to be interesting. Tomorrow is even might be even better, and we are starting to see a stormy pattern potentially starting throughout the United States. Uh, to be fair, so most people at Dixie, you know, Texas, Piney Woods, places east for the next few days need to be a little bit more weather aware than usual. Yep. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how today's temperature drops. Um, I had seen Willard Sharp on Facebook said at his location, he recorded a drop of 15 degrees. So I found that fascinating. I believe he was somewhere in the Arkansas, Missouri area. I believe he was in southeast Missouri. Yeah, somewhere around there. But to see a 15 degree temperature drop, very interesting. I also be interested to see the data that comes back from the NASA rockets that were blasted up. Um, I know Kyle, one of our members on the United National Weather Team was supposed to be out. I know Jamie Basilico is out there as well. So they might have some good pictures of the rocket launch from the East Coast. Currently so they happen to be in the area where they were rock going off from. Currently going over the outlook for the next couple days. So tomorrow is enhanced with a 10 sig tour for southern southeast Texas and western Louisiana. And day three, which is Thursday or sorry Wednesday, also has an enhanced risk with the mention for strong tornadoes being possible in Dixie Alley. So looking at three days of live streams here. So. If you're liking what you're seeing and you want to show your support, hit that hit that subscribe button, leave this a like, and share it to your friends because we'll be live for three days. Absolutely, yeah, we'll definitely have posts as well on the United National Weather Team on Facebook as well as check uh, Ethan's personal page on Twitter. Um, we'll keep you updated during these events over the next few days because I do feel like this is going to be like the unofficial official start of storm season at this point. This is the most action we've had in a while. And we have a lot of people in place today. What I'm concerned about the most today is we have people who aren't necessarily people who are severe weather enthusiasts. Um, we have millions of people who went along the path of totality today that will also be in the line of storms. People traveling home now as well. So that, that also makes a difference. That concerns me to have a large amount of people in, in places where we're expecting some some pretty gnarly weather. Now, we only have a few storms kicking off south of one of the fronts. Um, in the tornado watch area, though, we do have a tornado watch going on for tonight. And so that is definitely something to watch. It's effective until 8 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Oh, we have a tornado watch? I didn't even know that. Oh, yes. Yes, we do. We do have a tornado watch. I did post it earlier in trusted chat, um, but yes, we do have a tornado watch currently, and it expires in 266 minutes. Let me go ahead and pull it up on Radar Omega here. Copy that. If you, live in the, if you are in the yellow boxes, you are currently in a tornado watch until 8 p.m. Central Time, right? Yep, correct. Till 8 p.m., yes. Yeah, so. yeah, and they're saying couple tornadoes, possible large hail and isolated, very hard large hail events, three inches in diameter likely. 
um, and then isolating damaging wind gusts for 70 miles an hour possible. Supercells posing a threat for very large hail and a couple tornadoes should gradually increase in coverage and intensity this afternoon as they spread east northeastward. The tornado watch area is approximately along and 60 statue miles north and south of a line 30 miles west northwest of College Station, Texas to 35 miles north northeast of Alexandria, Louisiana. Also extreme turbulence. Um, so if you happen to be going in a plane tonight, uh, that could be an issue. You might not be going anywhere. Um, they're talking, you know, extreme turbulence and surface wind gusts to 60 knots, a few cumulonimbi nimbi with maximum tops to 500. So that's 50,000 feet, you guys. So flight level 500, 50,000 feet. Yeah, so expect. So that's some intense storms. So it looks like there's really no major <laughs> airport. Oh, wait. Yeah, there's no major airports really in the path of this tornado watch, but if you're flying, like, let's say if you're going from, like, San Antonio to, like, D.C. or something like that, you'd probably expect to be diverted a little bit, but regular air travel shouldn't be really disrupted, at least at airports. Now, that could change later on because we have some of the biggest airports in the world in this area. Well, that's just it. And they're talking hail aloft to three inches. So they're even going to have to try to fight the hail aloft. And three inch hail up in the air would not be fun to deal with. No, they would um, around that the there's that there. too. We'll probably take if they can. It depends on where the cloud deck is. It depends on, you know, what, even if you're coming out of Dallas, if they've got to fly anywhere east, you know, they can maybe go up and around um for tonight but that could change but it's something to watch because if we have cloud tops to fifty thousand foot that's going to be really intense storms regardless if it doesn't disrupt aviation or not later on tonight as storms continue to erupt because it looks like the looks like storms are beginning to fire near austin in the western part of the watch and we got a tornado warning just north of houston a tornado warning for Huntsville, let's go Texas. That was that was fast. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was. So that is for Montgomery County, Walker County, and San Jacinto County, Texas. Uh, yeah. Northwestern Montgomery County in southeastern Texas, West Central San Jacinto County in southeastern Texas, and southwestern Walker County in southeastern Texas. Uh, it was located seven miles southwest of New Waverly, or seven miles northwest of Willis, moving northeast at thirty-five. So if you live in New Waverly, the storm is coming right at you. So you need to be underground or in the closest interior room in your house. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible as the storm is tornado. Absolutely. This will also be going towards Huntsville State Park around 3.40 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So we got two minutes and it will be hitting a state park. I got it. Copy that. I just want to go fold laundry as soon as I will sat up from my desk seat. If you're on I-45 of south of Huntsville, you might want to find a place to pull off because this storm is going to impact I-45 or I-45 in about a couple minutes. Okay. Yes, and that area north of Conroe is quite um, okay. populated. It is a it is a little bit bigger suburb, um, yeah. so there are people, quite a few people out there. I've been to Conroe, and I know... It will be going towards Lake... Yeah, Valley. Lake Livingston will be next. Um, so the Lake Livingston area on Alaska, Sam Houston National Forest, if you're anywhere near that area right now, you want to take cover. It's not the most defined couplet, but it, there is something there. Oh, yeah. It is over Lake Conroe right now, though, so that could be affecting uh, the radar returns. So I'm expecting the next scan, we're going to see something better because it'll be over the lake. Yes, yeah, so if you're in New Waverly, you should be in your shelter right now. Take cover. This storm is coming right into town. Has It, it doesn't look like it's going to produce yet, but that could always change because these radar returns are never always... Never look good. They, they... No, and especially over water... Water, for some reason, affects the returns until it gets out and over that lake. Um, and then it's picking up moisture, too, at that time. If there is a tornadic circulation, it is going to pick up that moisture from the lake. Um, so then that also increases as it moves further and produces. So it's definitely something to watch. It's a feature that lately I've been definitely watching as, as tornadoes go over big lakes. It seems to affect the return until it gets a little bit away, and then we can start seeing it a bit clearer. 
And by then we could already have, you know, places perfected. So it's something to definitely watch if you if you personally live near a big lake. Yes, I'm 2020 right now, yeah. All right. So with that being said, let's look at got to keep on top of this because since we had this tornado warning pop up so fast we definitely want to be watching for other severe thunderstorms so new waverly a tornado is most likely imminent so you should be definitely in your shelter right now if you haven't already you should be in your sh going to your shelter if you are on i-45 lightning is increasing yeah lightning is also increasing so this storm is slowly intensifying so if you are on I-45 south from Huntsville down to Conroe, you should probably find a place to pull over out of the path of the storm if you are not already. Yeah, between New Waverly, Esperanza would also be another town that would be right in the middle of this. Mount Zion, you need to get taking cover. Emerald Lakes even, it's going to brush right there and even Willis. Willis, I would also definitely be in my safe place. A lot of those places in Texas are named by neighborhoods. Um, so these are probably neighborhood names more so than little towns. But Emerald Lakes, like I said, Willis. Um, you definitely, Esperanza, New Waverly, you definitely want to be in your safe place. Even Elmina which is a little bit north of New Way, really definitely be in your safe place. Uh, State Highway uh, 150 East as well. If you're also <laughs> in Southeast Huntsville, you should also be in your safe place. Even though the tornadic circulation will remain south of town, there's still the potential for some hail to deal with. So I would still be in your shelter because this storm could hook left and go right into Huntsville if it occludes correctly. So That's true too, because no it's still are, over the lake currently. Yeah, no matter where you are in a tornado warning, if you are in that polygon, you should always respect it and take shelter. No even close if. to it. Yeah, I even say a mile or two on the edge, even if you're right outside, because as you said, you know, Huntsville's right outside that polygon. Even anywhere around, conditions can change rapidly and quickly. Because the north side of town isn't in the polygon, but the south side is. And Sam Houston State University would also be in the path of this storm. So if you're at Sam Houston State University, definitely be in your, your safe place. And the hail core looks like it's right south of Moore Grove right now. Um, so that looks very interesting. I'm gonna go over Possum Walk Road. That's going to be as it approaches I-45. So definitely interesting. That hill core is pretty intense, too, and the lightning is still rocking and rolling. That storm to the north, too, is also gaining a little bit of strength, too. So I wonder if it might not cut off some of the energy in the tornado. We'll it's out. only a special weather statement, but if you look at it, it, it could. This storm could begin to organize as the as the night goes on, so everybody should be mindful of this. Yeah, the, I, the way we saw it last night was multiple waves, so this is not going to be like a one and done. This is our only event of the night. It is going to be multiple waves kicking back up and off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm prepared for a long night. I got some candy right here. I got some soda, so we're ready to rock and roll. I do too. I definitely need an energy drink, but I'll have that delivered. Well, not by traditional means, but my honey will bring it. <laughs> I demand. I will be here as long as I can. Um, I'm wide awake, but I am only on four hours of sleep in the past 24 hours. If you, if you got a Happy room, that. Fine, just let me know that you're taking off just so I don't wonder where you're at, you know? <laughs> No, I'll, no, I'd have to let you know anyway, because um, I'm in charge of, like, the content and alerts and stuff for the page, so you guys would definitely know. Cause, uh, yeah. So. I'll take over if she needs to get some reprieve, at least till Ben gets up, and then Ben will help us rock and roll from there. It's a group effort here. 
um, that's what it's all about, in my opinion, is us working together, working with other groups and people who also have the same mission and goal is one of our things. Um, teamwork makes the dream work, and it really does make the difference. Rotation is starting to broaden out, so it's most likely either undergoing a cycle or it got cut off. So might be good news mm -hmm. for residents of New Waverly and surrounding areas, but I would still be paying very close attention. Just because you don't. Know it's just happen. coming off that lake too, still. So I, yeah, it could, it could be recycling. It could be getting cut off, like I said, because I saw that feature to the north on those other storms that I'm like, mm, maybe it does. Um, so it's possible, but we definitely need to watch this over the next couple scans. Okay, can mini golf? And then it hits stop another. Sending me messages, please. Right. Yeah, it is kind of. But it's right over the lake still. So like I said, I don't know. Water interferes with radar. And I understand because what is it looking at? Moisture. And then what is it going over? A lot of moisture. So I understand like why it has a hard time. It looks like the storm is undergoing a cycle because that hook is non-existent now. So it's probably just cycling because it's just starting to get going. Like it jumped from a special weather statement to a tornado warning. It's true. That's true. Like this storm, twenty minutes ago was only only had forty mile an hour winds and pea sized hail, so it's slowly getting there. Looking downstream, that hill core is still surviving. On Alaska or Corrigan, maybe even Livingston or Seven Oaks, you should probably be paying attention, just in case this storm continues to hold strength mm -hmm. downstream. Yeah, even Cold Spring would be right on the edge of that. Tornado warning has been continued for New Waverly and Phelps, Texas. Copy that. We currently have no uh, severe thunderstorms. We only have two special weather statements, a flash flood warning, and four tornado watches. They just mezzo skill discussion there. I think they did. One was put out a couple hours ago. Yeah, I got that one. Okay. Is that the same one? It's the same Maybe my Omega one. just loaded enough to see it now. And it's right in this area. So, you know, SPC today so far, one for one on mesoscale discussions. You know, definitely the target area we have storms inside of. Right. Let's go see if we've got any updates. All right. Also seem yeah, and they did change. The and through Wednesday is also enhanced. Um, now, Ethan, which is interesting because we did talk about that last night when we were doing a little bit of forecasting that we thought maybe Wednesday would go enhanced and it did. Yeah. So that's also interesting to add and note. 249, so an hour ago, SPC updated. Uh, multiple rounds of severe thunderstorms expected through tonight. Across a very across a large portion of the southern plains in the lower Mississippi Valley, very large hail will be likely uh, the main threat. Though a few tornadoes and severe gusts are also possible. Let's see what they're talking about. And overnight, we should, we could also have a risk um, for some potential tornado activity and giant hail overnight, unfortunately. That couplet is strengthening right over New Waverly. This might not be good. Yeah, it's completely off the lake now. Yeah, it's starting to hook up. So Let me go New look Waverly, at it. You should definitely be yes, it is. Right at New Waverly. 
Our, and the lightning is still increasing yet. I mean, we're seeing bolts on bolts. I see more bolts on mine than on yours. Like, that's not good. New Waverly, please be in your safe place. If you're in the Sam Houston National Forest, you need to be in your safe place. If you are near I-45 or State Highway 150E or Elmina, Elmina will also be affected by this. Please be in your safe place now. Coming up next would be Waverly, Maynard, Mount Zion. All of you need to be ready for the potential of this going a little bit haywire. I have a feeling that this is going to intensify a little bit and kind of fill in on the back end here. Dorado. Also, Pine Valley, Huntsville State Park, Moore Grove. You all should be somewhere safe right now. State Highway uh, 75 South. You all need to be in a safe place. Oh, we're getting an inflow notch, friend. And also, we will be having a special guest later on today into the stream. It'll be Tyler Keeley, a storm spotter from the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. He will join us, and if storms approach his area, and he will give us live updates on how it looks and what we're looking at from the ground. So, appreciate you, Tyler, for joining us later on today, and can't wait to... Absolutely, hear. yeah, that'll be exciting. Yeah, 6 to 12 Zulu, they're thinking overnight. So it's going to be interesting. It could be a long night for many communities. Um, hopefully that does not affect, you know, travel. Um, I hope a lot of people are sticking put tonight. If they are in the areas that are if, if, uh, if expected to be affected by severe weather. Um, this is not the night to be heading out, but it is really just a Monday, but a lot of people took it off. A lot of people got off for school, um, but I do not think that schools and things are closed tomorrow. So there will be a little bit of people getting back home and settling effect tonight for sure. That storm is hooking hard right over New Waverly right now. It's looking pretty good. It's yes, it is. Cyclonic rotation. Oh, yeah. Do we have any storm tracks in it? One. Warning is up. Looking at Mezzo, going to let you know. Oh, fa Facebook is probably overloaded right now, the server, so there's a little bit of lag with loading and posting, but it's probably from like masses of people being on, on it right now and like loading stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um. Yeah, there's a new mezzo. It's 84. So. Yeah, and this is interesting because it is a mezzo of four. Um, so I didn't see it what it was before. Cell P2 Northeast at 29, but I'll be interested to watch this as it keeps going. But it is hooking really hard. Like, we've got a good inflow notch on this guy. I'm going to go back and look at it. I'm going to look at it on Storm Relative. It's even there on Storm Relative. That's what Jamie told me to use, so I tried to post all three pictures. He told me to, uh, to add that in. National Weather Service, they've said a lot of their people use Storm Relative to pop the warnings. So it's just something nice to look at if that's what they're also looking at. That's how I look at it. Do we have any CC? We do not. That's no. The I've been paying what? attention to. Right, because I just wondered, you know, since we're talking about, you know, deep hooks and intensification.
vacation, which, like I said, was something to watch after it passed over Lake Conroe. This is just something, a feature that I've been watching for many years that seems to be a thing. When a, when a tornadic cell goes over a lake, it picks up that moisture. The returns get messed up for a few scans until it can get across the lake and over the moisture. Once it gets over the moisture, you can see see it better and nine times out of ten it's been intensifying especially over like lake pontchartrain um in louisiana but any large body of water or even small lake rivers we've seen it but not as often as the lakes pools or like bayous or you know other types of channels of water so that's just one little interesting thing people can call it anecdotal i don't know the science into it but what i do know is it's a pattern that i've noticed over the years that I'm going to stick to when I see that because nine times out of 10, we intensify as we get past that body of water. <laughs> and I just think it's because water messes up the return because that's what the radar is looking for. You know, if they're looking for moisture return and they're over a lake, it's going to look like a big mess unless there's like giant hail hitting the lake okay yeah you can probably see that but everything else is going to look a little distorted and be like noise on radar you know there's a new interesting product um from next lab and ou that's supposed to be coming out that's going to blow the socks off of our traditional radar that will be able to um take layers of the the sky real time and be able to put a layered forecast together for precipitation and it'll be the most accurate thing we've ever had so i can't wait until we can get access for that so looking at the newest scans it looks like it's going to miss new waverly barely storms currently undergoing a meso uh, meso cycle so it yeah the storm doesn't look as impressive on radar as it did, so it's currently cycling, which is good news for the residents of New Waverly. It means they got spared for now. So, mm -hmm. as far as I'm aware of, there's multiple rounds of storms expected at night, so I'm not sure what they're, what the rest of the night will hold. And I probably should have forecasted before going live, but that's nah, my own stupidity. So, you live and you learn. Well, then we can always pull a real, um, real time view. Like I said, the SPC updated about two o'clock, um, so two forty nine, so a couple hours ago now. Um, they said with convection evolving largely as expected per prior outlooks, no appreciable changes to outlook areas appear necessary at this time. So what we looked at last night is what we got now. So that and that came out this afternoon. So I would feel confident. We also have a southerly low-level jet that we're waiting for it to eject to. I think once we see that, we're going to get more activity. Um, I don't know how much cloud cover this area had in the morning because they weren't in totality, so people really weren't focusing on them that much. No, but I think that that would also be an interesting point. I'd have to go back right. And look. So especially if they were able to get diurnal heating, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. So, you know, that diurnal heating would be at its peak going on its way down now. Um, so if they didn't have too much cloud cover, we could start really seeing things get affected once the low level jet kicks off. Because they thought one to three storms would initiate. And I mean, we've had storms initiating about a little bit before three. So that was correct. And they do say that there is a cap on a weak front and a dry line um, in northwest Texas. So that needs to break. Um, and that's where we're going to get the giant hail. And tornado warning has been canceled for New Waverly and surrounding areas. Copy that. And the special weather statement was also just dropped for that storm as well. 
Okay. So, so maybe the storm dropped before right now. severe limits? Mm-hmm. They're struggling to develop, but in the next couple hours, they'll start to cluster together. We'll probably see... Once an... that low-level jet ticks is when we'll see it start rocking. Because that's what's going to drive this system over the next three days is that ejection. If you notice, there is some dry lines already set up. We've got some interesting modes of action all across the United States right now as far as frontal development. Currently watching a um, bubble. There is a warm there. front. Well, there's a crazy warm front that connects to my low up here in Minneapolis. So what they're dealing with down there connects straight to the occluded low that's up here over me right now with the dry line over my area. So that has to connect and start moving with the low that's sitting over Oklahoma City that's an actual occluded front. Once these two mechanisms start rocking and rolling, then we can go. But it, that low connects all the way back towards Las Vegas and Tucson with the dry line. So we need all of that to kink out and start moving. And that's been what we've been seeing the last three, four, five setups. The West Coast has been lagging to kick these jet features out, but once they do, they're gone. That's going to be the play of the day. Because it looks like a big spaghetti mess low. There's multiple lows that are kind of even overlapping each other. It's really strange. So they're not just straight fronts. Yeah. So I find that fascinating too. And I know a lot of people are getting set up who are in the vicinity for storms tonight as well, who, you know, captured the eclipse and now are getting ready for the chase. Yeah, currently just overlooking most of Texas here. It looks like storms are starting to bubble up all along I-20 and south. So the biggest threat that these storms pose is some massive hail, but a tornado or two can also not be ruled out as the low-level jet continues to intensify. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch how this develops tonight, like I said. Especially because we just got some quick action, but it's not going to be able to hold until that jet goes. I mean, there is a warm front on the front of this, though. You know, we got 77 degrees in Paris, Texas, um, about 67, uh, 87 in Henderson, um, Shreveport, Louisiana is 82, uh, Nacogdoches, 75, and we got 70 degree dew points. So definitely juicy dews, some higher temperatures. So closer to the warm front, you've got almost 80 plus degrees. So the, you know, ingredients are there. The further you go north, the less, less amount of moisture is up, like by Conway and Little Rock, you got 50 degree dew points. Yeah, I'm just waiting because last time I cut a stream early was the night of Rolling Fork. I cut the stream, went out to dinner and Whenever next time I check my phone, all hell had broke loose. So we'll stay live until the severe weather threat actually does diminish. Oh, special weather statement. Next rad has this hail at three inch. So B5, max hail size three inch, 71 DBZ, 53 VIL, meso of three. Um, it's by Bolivar, yes. Hardeman County, Texas.
Reed Timmer intercepted. That the, looks interesting. Reed Timmer intercepted the uh, what you call it? What? The eclipse in a jet. Hmm. Awesome. Well, they just did a video, I guess, that everybody will be seeing soon with Supercar Blondie, so I'm sure he's, they've got some hookups now. Mm. Lightning is starting to intensify by Hickory Valley in the cell with the next red three-inch hail. So we're starting to get lightning off the front edge. We're starting to see a defined hail core on radar. I'm just going to go on record to say this here. On I-55 North, south of St. Louis, uh, traffic is backed up for over 80 miles. What? Yes. Wow. And we think that's eclipse related? It's eclipse related. Just heavy traffic, people okay. coming out of the mountains, trying to get on I-55 and head home. It's just a nightmare. If you go on Google Maps... And oh, I can only traffic, imagine. If you have Google Maps traffic turned on, you can see from like Arnold all the way south. It is just red. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, definitely not good. So, yeah, definitely be safe out there, everybody traveling, trying to get back home, out of the path of totality. Um, yeah, definitely take care of yourselves. But I definitely understand, like, you know, but if I was, if I went to go see the eclipse, I wouldn't have went anywhere today. I would have stayed put wherever I watched totality, enjoyed, had a dinner in town. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't have left because, honestly, I'd rather travel the next day once people are starting to go towards home. But that's just me. I like to plan that way. Give me one second here, I'll be right back. This economy is so bad, I'm about to start an OnlyFans. God damn. Literally, everything cut out, and all I heard was OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't even know where to go from there. Like, oh my lord. Side conversations. Make it wild. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and step away just for a second. I'm gonna use the restroom while we have a moment before all hell breaks loose. So I'll be right back. I'm just gonna leave the radar up. I'm not even gonna switch my tab over. All right. Let's see. Three point five inch next red marker, three point seven inch next red marker on that special weather statement. 
going out in Hickory Valley, going to Bolivar, Texas. That is some big hail, if so. And I'm surprised that's not warned. Look at the teal in the hail core. Like, I'm really surprised that that's not warned as a severe thunderstorm. Like, that's too big of a hail to have special weather statement. If that's actually what's following by next red. Next red isn't always necessarily with those hail markers, a depiction of what's happening, but they're consistent. Yeah, new scan, hail's still there. And the hail is showing up on velocity, it's so strong. Like it has moved into, and this is right outside of Memphis, to the east of Memphis, actually Memphis. This is Tennessee. I had it zoomed in too far, but yeah, no, this is Tennessee, actually. So people better lock it in. Whiteville will be next. Oh, look at this hail core on velocity. Oh, my goodness. This is insane. I'm back. What did I miss? Okay, Boulevard, Tennessee. We have a special weather statement. 3.5 inch hail uh, marker, but the hail is showing up on velocity. What? In the Hickory world? Valley. Are you sure 3. That's not just a glitch? Yeah. No. They're, look, the markers have been consistently back from Lagrange. 3.2, 3, 2, 3.7, 3, 3.5, 2.7. No. So I don't we, think that many hail markers is a glitch. Well, it says 40 mile hour wind. It's straight by. Hail. Look at, look at. I don't care what they say. Look at the, look at the hail core Dang. on reflectivity. Look at that. Now go in on that radar site. Now look at that shit. You tell me that's not no damn hail. You tell me that's not no big. Hail. I I can't tell. The ra radar doesn't look that good for me, but. I'm gonna go back down to Texas. Look at it. You can see the damn. You can see it on there. All right. Got a new special weather statement. Stop North that close to the wind. Yeah, they're saying half inch on this, but the returns are coming in insane, and it's looking interesting. It had teal hail markers last scan. Like in reflectivity, we had teal, so you know some bigger hail was hitting the ground. But I doubt there's that many people out there. This looks pretty small. I mean, what's the population of Boulevard, Tennessee? Let's see, three Five thousand people. That's it. So yeah, it's pretty small. So I doubt we'll get that many. It is, but a couple. Oh, they did put us uh, SVR on it. One point seven five inch hail. There we go. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm talking about. At four fourteen, a severe thunderstorm was located near Whiteville, or seven miles southwest of Boulevard, moving northeast at thirty five golf ball size hail and sixty mile an hour wind gusts. That's pretty interesting. Oh, and now it says forage hail marker on cell B five. I don't believe I don't believe the markers. They could be always they're normally inaccurate. I don't either, but if somebody was there on the ground, they could tell us. That's the thing. The markers are there to show you that hail is consistently falling in some form, but it's not necessarily going to be the size that the marker says. But the fact that it's totally increasing as it goes, 
makes me think that they're getting solid at least golf balls down yeah. to the ground because that's at least what the warning's for. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which means hail. Hail. Like. Storm. So, I don't know. We'll continue to monitor it because it's interesting to say the least. Storms are firing it's definitely our... at I th whatever highway this is. I-30, yeah. I-30 southeast of Little Rock. And I-40. Look at that polygon. Uh, we also have a little special weather statement outside Nacogdoches with one inch hail marker. Which that's interesting. That looks like it could maybe get some activity. It's got a little donut hole behind it, so it could be pulling in some some moisture. That's outside Lufkin and Nacogdoches. That's in Texas. And I mean, with the enhanced risk, I mean, you know, anything can start popping off sooner rather than later. Oh, we got a trade, especially other statements going into Tennessee now. Storms are popping off of that area east of Memphis right now. We got a train special weather statement. Looks like a pretty decent little storm. Then we've got the one that has the giant hail markers out of Boulevard that has this, the severe thunderstorm warning. And then there's one little cell ahead of that even that's got some, some meatiness to it. Which I didn't have east of Memphis on my radar for today. You know, because those are out of the risk areas necessarily, but definitely some larger hail. A few cells south in Mississippi also trying to get their act together as well. South of that special weather statement. There's now a new special weather statement on a cell that's rapidly growing in LaGrange, uh, Arkansas, it looks like. Um, penny size hail right now. And that just popped. It was literally nothing two seconds ago. It had a 1.7 inch hail marker and then bam, all of a sudden we get this special weather statement. So that is rapidly going. Um, so that one is also rapidly growing right now too. That one's interesting. That is uh, west of the storms in Memphis, southwest to be exact. So it's kind of creating this line structure and storms are firing off of that right now. Hail looks like it's strengthening back in that boulevard cell. We're still at 74 dBZ, max hail size 4 inch, meso of 3. And it's got some teal on that. I can't imagine okay. decent hail isn't falling. Oh, uh oh. We're about to have another severe thunderstorm warning on this cell that's near Helena, Arkansas. Oh my god, look at the hook on the Bihalia storm! 
Look at this. Look at it. Look at it. The one south of Mem southeast of Memphis. It's got a hook now. Look at it. That's a backwards hook. I don't think that's an accurate hook. Yeah, no. Look at it. That went from nothing to something. These storms are starting to get their act together along this line. Which makes me think that the low level jet could start to be ejecting. It's ahead of it, but it doesn't matter. It just matters where it's starting to move. Because there's two lows that, that we're working with. Like I said, the one that's running through Oklahoma City, back through Texas, and then we've got the warm front that's running from San, An San Angelo, Texas, all the way up through like Paducah, Fort Wayne, and then it's crossing in Michigan. So that's what we're probably seeing ejecting right now, why we're seeing all these storms firing up along these lines. Lightning's increasing in that one that has the backwards hook now. But these are going from nothing to something quick. We also have, no, those are terminal stations, it looks like, that are down. I'm here, Scarlett. I'm just listening, trying to uh, watch these streams and storms. And yeah, yep. DBV yep. went down to 783, um, but has a three inch hail marker now on the SVR, which is going for 38 more minutes. They have this severe thunderstorm warning, so they're definitely expecting this to hold. Also, trying to eat and do laundry at the same time. It's fun. Yeah, life gets interesting. Well, <clears throat> see what we got here. One piece. Yeah, we're definitely starting to get some little cells and storm tracks, even south of Palestine, Texas, Great Bland, Centerville. So little storms are starting to fire. With lots of lightning. Every little cell has some, some decent bolts in them. None of these are warned yet. Some are starting to get by Capo radar going into Alexandria, Louisiana. Um, but definitely all of these are starting to get lightning. And that would be down in the Tornado Watch area. We're going to go back up towards Tennessee, see what we've got over there. Still decent little hail core on Highway 64. And it is in the 80s where these storms are firing in Tennessee as well. Yeah, Austin radar is starting to show it as a line.
Oh, we got the one of the first shots back. Um, from Chris. Yeah, and they look really good. No, I just saw him. I was, I was about to say something, and I was, I was like, "Oh, there, there he is." Better than any right. cell phone pick I'm gonna get. I mean, people have some really good cell phone picks, so don't no. don't knock it. No, no, um, my friend Wade, he just joined the page. He's gonna let me use some of his. He has a. I was really impressed with his pictures. Um, he has a Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, and he got some amazing okay, yeah. pictures in the cloud. That's wonderful, but still pretty good. So. No, and I guess he can get really good moonshots too with that with that phone. Oh, yeah, we need to take this video from uh, Mel as well. She got a good totality video as well. Yeah, she gave us some um, her pictures, too. Yeah, that video is, is really good, too. So, yeah, we had quite a few people out today. Yeah. Which is excellent. You know, we had people from Texas, you know, through Missouri. Um, Indianapolis, we had you, um, and we have not heard from, uh, Kyle or Jamie yet to see if they got anything on the East Coast. So, I mean, pretty, pretty good. I know Kyle was out, but, you know, that's a whole other story. Correct. He's probably asleep now. Oh. Maybe. I know he was going to try to go meet Jamie out there to go watch the rockets firing. So hopefully he got to go do that. So that's and Noah was in here before, before you came in. All these storms really are. It seems like as of right now, that's what I mean. And if you start noticing, all of them have lightning, and they're all starting. Correct, but they're all trying to fire in like a little line. Like the ones that are able to try to go, they're all together with that energy. Because even the line in Texas that isn't warned yet, if you look at the storm tracks, they're all going about the same way and direction. Hopefully, you get to go do that. Okay. I can help you out.
All right, I am back. I'm dealing with small crisis in my home. Good. This is live, people. Real life is happening at the same time. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll have dedicated studios and, and space and we can do all that. But for as of right now, we get real life mixed in. Yep. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. All right. We got one more special weather statement going over the border. And supposedly we've got some decent hail in it um, from Arkansas into Mississippi, Tennessee. So uh, kind of at the tri state there. That'd probably be an interesting shelf cloud if you rode on Highway 79. All those cells in Nacogdoches. Uh, East and Nacogdoches are starting to try to get themselves together, but there's still special weather statements. Speaking of which, my dog just got sick everywhere. So that's not awesome at all. Ew. Real life is no so, fun. Okay, so the storm, looking at mesoscale analysis here, it looks like there's almost 4,000 cape to work with in some spots, but there's no shear at all. Hmm. So they're just going to be massive hailers. And that could be. Night. Correct. And that's why I'm concerned about overnight tornado threat potential, especially if we don't get that low-level jet to start kicking out soon. It's going to be late night out of control. So I'm kind of debating on pausing the stream until later, but I know as soon as I pause it, shit's going to hit the fan. Oh, yeah, and we can come back at any time, too. I feel like that's not a bad idea. Um, we could even stay, like, two hours from now. If nothing else occurs, we'll be back. I'm going to it's doing we've got you know simple storms definitely storms are could be heading into your area you know they could be intense at times small hail some bigger hail you know we've got one warning with golf ball so like there's that Hmm. I know. Yeah, definitely today was an interesting day for the eclipse. Hope 
hopefully we'll put together more eclipse photos from today and post them on the page um i know we've got some from chris chase coming we've got some from chris june coming um and i've got quite a few people who have let will let me use theirs as well so i'll be putting those in the content creation group renee um so we'll definitely have more eclipse photos some videos as well from a few of our members across the country how they experienced totality and or just the eclipse in general Oh, I'll show you there. I am. Did we, um, did we pause yet? Or are we still waiting for? Oh, new mesoscale discussions. I don't know what we're doing. 
Oh, hold on, hold on. There we go. Let's just get this question out for. For where? Ninety-five okay. percent watch issuance. Supercell's capable of. No, large, where's that for? Large, uh, no, like the uh, Abilene area, shit like that. West of Fort Texas. Worth. Copy that. Yeah. Copy. Oh, we do have one on the east as well, but that one's been there. Supercell is capable of large to very large hail, two to four inches in diameter are expected this evening with convective initiation after 22Z. It's right about now. Watch That's insane because I bought a special roof for my house that is architectural steel. Um, it's supposed to be one of the safest roofs uh, on the planet. And my roof is only really rated to 2.5 inch hail. There's no commercial roof that rates higher than that. Hmm. So do you get three and four, like you, I probably would only have dents because it's 26 gauge architectural uh, steel shingle. Um, but other people would just have holes straight through. I mean, that could kill your livestock. And this is a big ranching com country out there. Um, but that could kill your livestock. You got a horse out in the field. Yeah. They get knocked with a four inch hailstone. My immediate thought yeah. was your chickens. You got a garden? Yeah, your chickens would be out, but they're smart. Yeah. They'll go hide. You gotta protect your chickens. I was just thinking about your chickens. I'm like, go get the chicken. They'll go hide during a storm, though. They can feel it coming in. But a lot of people in Texas don't have barns because it stays so warm. Right. So for, like, horses and cattle and stuff, you just don't put them up because it doesn't ever get cold enough. Not only that, it's very windy out there. Like, it's not uncommon. That's to true, 60 too. Hour winds. That's true, too. So, yeah, you could be rebuilding a barn every year otherwise, so you don't want to do that either. They're saying 1,500 uh, to 1,500 CAPE. Okay, so the low-level jet is going to increase in the early evening hours. So they're also acknowledging that it is not ejected yet. So that's what I said. 6.30-ish. Will probably be when. Um, they say um, lo relatively weak low level shear is expected to limit the initial tornado potential, but as the low level jet increases into the early evening hours, tornado potential may increase if the storms can remain discreet. So, yeah, that's definitely for, like, Matador, Lubbock, Post, La Mesa, Midland, Big Lake, Azona, San Angelo, Sterling City, Abilene, Haskell, Guthrie, Graham, all of those areas. And that's expected after 22Z. And it is currently 21Z. I'm still reeling about the comment. <laughs> I know. I got to go back and watch that. I have not had time to sit and Dude, watch that. But yes, that's like, probably what you got. It wasn't like a shooting star, which I've only seen like maybe 
one or something, but like it was like bigger. Like it was like a fireball and I saw it and it was pretty big. And I knew Did there was a comment. It, like, maybe, like, okay, on the face of the clock, what what time do you think you saw it? Let's see, it was like if, if looking straight up and down is noon, you know, do you think it was maybe like ten o'clock? Oh, you nine mean, o'clock position? Like you mean, on the face of a clock, what position would it have been? If the sun and you looking straight up at it is twelve o'clock, where on the face would this comet have been? What direction? Ten o'clock, nine o'clock, six o'clock? It was like nine, ten o'clock. If it was straight up. Yeah, it was that's like, where they said that's where they said it was. So that probably honestly is what you saw was Comet 12 P Pons. That's why I asked you first before I confirmed you because I just wanted to know what you felt like it was, because if it was about 10 o'clock is where they said on the face where it would be. Well, I didn't know. I I I I No, was, I know you didn't know. I thought it was like a pair of <laughs> like trooper Jorns over there, like, well, I hope it's not a plane crash. And then I'm like, shut up. Don't be putting your negativity on this feed, like. <laughs> right, 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 right. But yeah, I'm gonna show you a little picture to show that that's what you saw. I put it in trusted, but yeah, that's what you saw. Guaranteed. And not everybody got it. And I don't know how many people were in Ohio for totality. Um, so that could have been something that exclusively you, cause I know people like in Missouri didn't catch it. People were looking for it though, but I don't know if anybody got that elusive shot with it and you got it in video though. So that's something. No, See, if I had, that's where if, it would have. If I had had a, a, a camera or knew how to, and I could like project what I was seeing with my eyes, like it was pretty big. Like it, like, like it was pretty focused. Yeah, you see, but is that about where it would have been in the sky? Yeah, but it was like twirling and, do, and like doing weird shit. Hmm, interesting. Could have right. been just some corona action, but that's interesting. Hold on, hmm. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find in the video where I zoomed on on it because I was a bad camera person at once. Hold on, it's all over the fucking place. Okay. Go to the live feed and go to um 6.51. That's when I start freaking out. Okay. And I eventually zoom in on it if you hang in there. Um Many people, then you know, you probably. <laughs> One second, Daniel Mendoza, is that correct? Is that a real comedy? Hey, which ones do you need removed? Sweet, five eight. Okay, so interesting. Yeah. Let me see. Um, <laughs> I zoom in on it too eventually. Right. Did he happen to zoom in? Yeah, okay. Do you or no? Because yeah, so, so that would be interesting to know as well. Maybe it wasn't because it, like, did you see how it looked like it was on fire, but then it, it burned out, but then came back on? Right. 
that could be just the sun too as it clips t- totality um it does have that ring of fire moment as it switches that would be over on the farther side of the sky away from it i don't know i'll have to look at the video i haven't had time to look at it yet because i've got a thousand things going on at work no you're fine you can maybe i can look at other people that got the comment and see if it looks similar that's what i'm thinking but i haven't seen anybody who's gotten it yet hmm Maybe I can like ask said, around Middletown. In Ohio. It could have been just where you were that allowed you to see it. So that that we'd have to wait for more people in your area. Yeah, I'm getting ready to do a post and say, did anyone else see the fireball thing in the sky? Right, right. So Northwest. We have like- three SVRs now. All three of those special weather statements now turned into SVRs at Tennessee. Oh, did they? Okay. Yes, they did. So what direction would have that been, though, for me? Was Is that, if the sun was north, is that, like, that east? Yeah, I get it. Trust me, I get it. Yeah, something like that. We'll see what we've got here. we still got some interesting hill markers on this guy. Still got that main uh, SBR going for 37 more minutes. We've got another one going for 22 minutes. Yeah. And the last one is an extension. <laughs> for the most part, at least. I'm so we're yet. probably going to start seeing some interesting activity picking up here. I'd say in the next two hours for sure. We've got one more special weather statement outside Waco right now. So that is something new that was not there before. The only reason why I know South about the... Waco is in the tornado walk. Waco is because that thing. <laughs> the thing. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. The thing. Yeah, the thing. That's safe. It is safe. Grows back in like Ma- Mahaya is where one of our uh, members is. That looks like a decent storm coming out of Rosebud. Definitely just some strong rain, some good lightning. Might be a good show, too, as it comes in. Uh, storms are al- also firing at Round Rock near Pflugerville. Uh, 0.5-inch hail reported there. No warning on that currently north of Austin. Uh, we also have, have those cells by Nacogdoche still, but they're not looking that great anymore. Uh, we could look at it on Shreveport radar, see if we have a better look there. But cells are kind of moving to the north, northeast right now, north northeast. So strange storage motion. So we do have that. Did you say, did um, do we have any live active chasers out today? Uh, everybody's out. We don't. I don't think we have. Oh, okay. Yep. They are, yeah. There are some. There's a couple. I think Gherkin's out in western Texas. Gherkin, Topic, and Wealthy are all out in western Texas. Oh, and it looks like uh, Flanagan's out there, too. Mm-hmm. Flano. Yeah, a bunch of them out by Sweetwater. Looks like a little chaser convergence out there. West to Abilene. Ryan Scholl, Max Archer. Bunch of people are out. Which, this would be the time to start getting out that way. I you know, see. get yourself in place for the potential, because they're kind of in this little channel that might that might pop off. It's in between the two fronts. So we'll see it. Cause that it probably won't pop off yet, but it'll it'll be coming shortly. 
We have one special marine warning for Port Arthur, Texas area, Orange, Bridge City. The special weather statement on top of that. It's got a one inch hail marker on it. It's also going over Sabine Lake and the Sabine National Wildlife Refuge, so that is something to watch. Very swamp, swamp like, very wet, almost to the Gulf. Wow. Interesting. Kyle did get photos. Somebody got him a smartphone photo filter. He did get photos. So we should have some of the eclipse from the East Coast as well. Now it was partial there, not total, but we still should have photos from the eclipse there. So we basically have from middle America to the East Coast covered, which is a pretty cool thing today. Uh, interesting. So, some people saw the same thing you did in Georgia, Renee. Special weather statement just north of Austin. Copy that. But yes, they did. There is a, a journalist, chief meteorologist for Channel Two Action News. Um, also says that something strange was seen in the sky about the same place you saw it in Georgia. And that would line up. I could see them in Georgia being able to see the same thing you could straight up in Ohio because it's a straight shot.
We got a severe thunderstorm warning. We have our first south of Tyler, in Texas. Texas. Yep, Jacksonville, Texas. I just saw that. East of Palestine, Texas. Looks like it's there's a little special weather high. statement on the back end. Yep, I was gonna say there's that on the back end that's kind of making it go all the way to that Grosbeck storm. I said these have all kind of had that line feature tonight as they've been kicking off so far. You've got, you know, if you look at the line, that's the same line that's kicking off even towards Memphis if you draw a straight line back. Right. So it kind of makes sense that we would see this starting to pop off in this way. That hill core is pretty intense. So if you're in Jacksonville, Maydell, um, Ballard, Troop, Mount Selman, Mixon, Reese, Lake Palestine, Cuny, and Teaselville, you might want to take cover from hail. And it's 60 mile an hour wind gusts in this storm as well. We have one special weather statement. That one in Louisiana is still cranking um, on the border of Orange. Port Arthur is definitely starting to get some activity on it. Definitely getting healthier as it goes through the Sabine National Wildlife Refuge. The train in Tennessee is still going strong. Those storms really haven't faded out yet. The hail might have calmed down a bit more, but there was a public hail report of one inch in that area and 1.2 inches. Very interesting.
Yeah, we have five SVRs now. Two in Texas, three in Tennessee. Hey, Ethan, I'm about to get uh, dinner ready for my family and stuff, and I will be back, and we will keep going with coverage in a little bit, um, and we'll go from there. So I'll be back in a little bit. Keep everybody informed. Like I said, currently on the board, we have five SVRs. Um, four now. One's fallen off the board. Two in Tennessee, two in Texas. One special marine warning, four special weather statements, one flash flood warning in Canada, and three tornado watches. I will be back in a little bit.
All right, let's see what we got here. I just stepped away for a minute to handle some BS. Everybody leave me. Nope, no one. Not everybody left me. 